How we're going to review of X-Men Days of Future Past, directed by Brian Singer, a film that follows Charles Xavier and the X-Men as he sends Wolverine back to the 1970s in order to prevent the extinction of the mutant race. In order to start this review properly, I need to admit that I'm not the world's biggest X-Men fan, and it's not because it's something that I have anything against, it's just, it's just something I've never really got into. I've never seen any of the films outside of the X-Men Origins Wolverine, which was not exactly uh, the best film. And uh, I did see X-Men First Class, a film that was actually among my favorites for 2011. I really, really did dig that film. And regarding the trailers, Days of Future Past, the trailers didn't really grab me. It was really the kind of same effect that First Class gave me with its uh, trailers. I was quite indifferent. But now after seeing the film, I can now say that X-Men Days of Future Past is the best film of some tales of 14. This is excellent. Days of Future Past has everything that pretty much every single film of the summer has seriously lacked. It's got compelling and in-depth characters. It's got great acting. It's got an interesting premise that's unafraid of trying something new. It's refreshing. And not only that, this is not only a great summer blockbuster, this is a great film. And in fact, I'm going to come out and say this, but I believe that X-Men Days of Future Past is the best film to be associated with Marvel since Spider-Man 2. I mean, this is among the best superhero films of all time. Now the biggest problem I've had with summer movies so far this year is that I've really had a hard time finding characters I can really root for, characters that I can identify with, characters who are well written. And X-Men Days of Future Past completely fixes this problem. These are characters that I can root for. These are characters that I can identify with. These are characters who are well written. And not only are the heroes well written, but so are the antagonists. I mean, these are characters that aren't wearing big batty demon horns. These are characters who are realistic. And when an antagonist is doing something to antagonize the protagonists, um, you can kind of almost get behind them. I mean, this is an example of good writing. I'm so sick of summer blockbusters that think that they can get away with having no story, no characters, and just amping up the special effects and spectacle and all that stuff and completely sacrificing everything that makes a good movie. I mean, I'm so tired of movies doing that. It's completely lazy. And X-Men Days of Future Past never once drops the ball. Ever. And yes, X-Men Days of Future Past is a film that does use a lot of CGI. However, at the same time, I do believe it's also a film that uses it respectively and tastefully. And furthermore, the spectacle that is present in this film is actually quite reserved. It's a film that knows how to hold everything back and wait for the climax in order to let it resonate with its audience when these scenes are being played out. And since I'm on the subject of spectacle, one of my favorite scenes in the entire film is a scene that involves Evan Peters as Quicksilver, and it also involves uh, slow-mo. And it's not like Zack Snyder where he uses uh, you know, slow-mo just for the pure sake of it because it just looks cool. No, uh, it's a scene that actually uses it for a very nice effect. It does a great job at letting the viewer kind of see how Quicksilver works because, you know, his superpower is that he's very fast. He's faster than a bullet. So he can do all these things and you won't see him doing it because he's so fast. So in order for you to actually see how he does things, it slows everything down and you get to see him in action, which is a really cool scene. It's actually uh, a lot of fun. It's quite funny. It's just a great scene. And what I also really appreciate about this film is that unlike most Marvel movies where the films are typically a little bit more on the lighthearted side, a little bit more on the comedic side, this is a film that actually takes itself quite seriously. And yet at the same time though, when the film does have those little comedic relief moments, they actually work. And last but not least, one thing I've yet to talk about is the performances. They're all quite top-notch. James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Hugh Jackman, Jennifer Lawrence. And I love the addition of seeing Peter Dinklage as Dr. Bolivar Trask on the big screen. He's quite phenomenal in Game of Thrones, so I very much enjoy seeing him in this. Overall, X-Men Days of Future Past is the kind of film that should be missed by anyone who enjoys great movies. In fact, this really does seem as if this should be a fall film rather than a summer film because that's how good it is. So with all that said, I'm going to give X-Men Days of Future Past the highest rating I've given all summer long, and that is a 4.5 out of 5. As always, I'm Colin Kirkland, and thank you so much for watching.